All right, so this is a bit of a different version of a live stream. I'm doing this off Discord, um, which means that people can join in. You won't hear what they're saying, but if I start like responding to something, I'll try to repeat what was asked or said so that people are aware. Um, I'm following this up from the third part of the live stream for the neural net and game engine coding um, that I did earlier today. And I'll hopefully have this uploaded today. I'm not editing this video. This will be an unedited video. I'm not going to do the intro or any of that. I'm literally going to pick up from where I left off. Because the funny part was, the second I turned it off, I turned off the stream, I went, oh, that's what I was doing. I had a brain fart. And the funny part was, we copied this down here, right? The other part I needed was literally this part. So we're going to take this right now. We actually don't need it as it is, but we need the particular... Um, uh, what's it called? We need the particular switch. We need the enumeration. Sorry, I'm still very under the weather, weather um, and I'm still having a hard time speaking. So we're literally just going to plop that there. And what we're going to do is actually create some new functions around each of these. So we have the step method, the linear method, the sigmoid, whatever our activation function is, our derivative is defined based off of that. So that done, let's pop back over to our maths utils file here. And I'm just going to copy this bit and drop this in here. And this is part of our function library or our math function library. And this is our uh, learning deriv, derivative function. I'm sure I spelled that wrong. Um, in fact, I'm going to copy the word derivative from somewhere else and just paste it in real quick and then just go through and fix each letter. Yeah, I definitely spelled that wrong or one very, very wrong. Okay, so the way this works is we're going to have one for each type. And so we have this sort of for our step, which is a hard limiting factor. Um, we have our linear, which is very simple. Funny enough, the linear for the um, derivative is literally just A. We have our act and sigmoid, and we have this bit. Now, what I'm going to do for this is we're going to do them in the same order. We're going to, I'm going to, st so it's step, linear, sigmoid, and hypertan. All right, yeah, I know there's a problem with that. Let me just minimize these again because we're done with them. I don't know why I opened them to show them to you. Uh, so we're going to do inline, double, and then this will be dare for derivative. Or you can do uh, LRN for learning, step. And for this one, well, I'm, I'm not going to define it quite yet. I'm just going to give an empty definition of return 0, 0.0 for now. Okay. Okay. And then we'll do, actually, that should be on a different line. All right, I'm not sure why I, I had that special moment of, we're doing the same line. I'm so used to doing getters that way. Okay, we have that. And then we're going to do inline double and then dare linear. And again, for now, we're just going to put in a blank return. We will be taking care of these in just the next few seconds, don't worry. Okay, and I'm going to cheat this time. Inline double, double, dare, sigmoid. And again, we're just returning 0, 0.0. And yes, we actually will need the same arguments for each of those probably, but I am going to put them in in a second. When I say same arguments, I mean from the activation versions of these. Okay. So these are our basic derivative functions based on our activation functions. If you add in other activation functions or make other variations of them, you'll need to follow them. Now, some of you might know that I use a different version of the hard limiting activation function where I do this. And in fact, I know some code that works that way. Um, likewise, I know some code that reverses this, but that's a different matter. That would still probably have the same, um, the same derivative as this. You just need to inverse it if it's negative. Um, I'm not entirely sure what I'm trying to say there. 
All right, so we're going to start with our step function. And the way we're going to do that is for our derivative, we need a double of um, our double of um, of x, or a double that we're going to call x. Sorry. And this one works a bit differently. We're going to do if x equals zero. And then we'll have an else case. And in this else case, we actually are returning zero. Okay. So this case here, we want to return the max value. Now, the way in which we're going to do that and I'm just thinking about if we're going to use a particular built-in C++ function or if we're going to do something else. Um, I'm just thinking. And again, I'm sorry, I'm not editing this out. Also, because this is, oh no, I have, um, I'm on Discord, so I'm not doing it that way. Um, Give me one second. I need to look up. I'm going to show you what I'm looking up because um, I can't remember how to do this. This is something really basic. How to get basic uh, or how to get maximum double C++. So Uh, that's a bit concerning. Okay, so we'll be using that approach. So to do this, we need to include apparently the float library. I so rarely do this that I'm surprised that I uh, this even actually exists. I know it did because I've taught it before, which is the funny part that I've looked this up. So this is float.h we need. And we're just going to get a particular float function. And in this case, what we want to do is return. And then we're going to do standard. Um, actually, sorry, I am using the C version of this. What we're going to do instead is limits. I actually should know that because I also taught that one in the same lesson, which I did the float thing that I was about to do. Um, and this is numeric limits of type double and we are going to return the max value. Now, this is a massive number. Now, if I if I just search the max, it is 1.10, sorry, 1.7 to the to ten, uh, times by 10 to the power of 308. And that number is a massive 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 number. Um just so you can see it on screen, I'm going to copy and paste that in. That's that number. Um, I honestly prefer scientific notation. There we go. All right, so that's what we're returning there. Not some tiny little number, right? Right? It's fairly massive. And this is our step version. Okay, so now that we've done our step, let's just minimize this for now. Sorry, I had a moment where I was like, how am I calling up the different ones? The switch is on the other screen. I'm an idiot. All right, so that's step. Next, we have linear. And linear, <laughs> um, yeah, let's take a look at linear up here really quickly. It's this. Yeah, we're just going to pass in double A, and we're returning A. I mean, that was really hard to do. Like, I can't believe I I was able to do that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm mocking myself from earlier still. Um, this part of this, the start of this will, this, this recording, the stream, whatever you want to call it, will probably start well. But as time goes on and with my, my current health, I'm probably going to end up making some weird mistakes. Now we're going to do sigmoid. And I just want to double check 
something. It is a different, okay. <clears throat> Just wanna make sure we weren't adding anything just directly into that. We're gonna pass in double X and all we're returning here, all we're returning here, Actually, we're gonna have to pass in two arguments. We need to pass in double A and double X. And the reason why I was looking at this was we actually have to pass in the um, sigmoid function there. Just before we go any further forward, I just wanna make sure I didn't screw up the um, linear, like I didn't miss anything. It is just returning A. Um, sorry, I have notes on the math. Uh, calculate is A times X, cause it's linear. Derivative is just A, it's the coefficient, yep. Um, and then what was the first one I did? Oh, sorry, that was linear. Step is what I wanted to double check. I knew linear was right. See, I'm not feeling well. And linear, we're not passing double max value into anything, we're just returning it. Okay, this one is the, the, the tricky one, I think. And I was just making sure I hadn't forgotten any. We're gonna do um, act sigmoid, and we're gonna pass in, of course, a and x. And then we are going to multiply that by 1 minus um, act sigmoid x. Or ax. Okay. There we go. And then finally, are you giving me an error? Oh, okay, make sure to have both those brackets there. And finally, we have hypertan. So hypertan is, again, I just wanna see if we can't copy anything directly out of here. Oh, sorry, I'm actually reading the formula for this. I'm like, it's the same formula. And then I looked at it, I'm like, oh yeah, now it's my note for what the formula for hypertan is. So this one, we're gonna be as, just as tricky. And I need to take a quick look at this. We do need both the double A and double X. So we're gonna take that. All right, and for this, what we do is we're returning, all right, you ready for the fun one? 1.0 minus, and then we're going to do exponent, and then we're going to do hypertan, or, uh, act hypertan, and then we're going to pass in ax, and then we're going to raise that to the power of two. Okay. What's the issue here? I'm gonna do this part by part, just to make sure I haven't messed up the bracketing. So it is act, so we're gonna do first return just so we have that there. Act hypertan ax, okay, that's right. Then we are going to do exponent. There's one comma two. Two point zero. In no instance of an overloaded exponent transfer. Okay, I'm just gonna cheat a bit. Okay, so I think I can't use doubles with what I'm doing here, even though I'm doing it earlier. So let's um, uh, 
I'm just gonna quickly Google because I can't remember what the float version of it is. Or the double version. And I'm checking in C11. You know, I have definitely used the wrong function. And I'm just scroll up to the top to make sure I have the right header. I do. Um, give me one second. I'm just going to switch this out to uh, pow. And switch this to pow. And yes, there's a missing bracket still, I think. Okay, hang on. We know power works here. So we're going to make this negative power. Okay. Then we're going to do 1 minus 0 there. Oh, I have an extra. Okay. Uh, right. And then let's just switch this out to 2.0. That's still good. We'll get rid of that. Okay. And now that I'm looking at that... Um, Is that right, actually? Yeah, that's what we x, not power. We're not raising, yeah. It's exponential, not, not power. Um, sorry about that. I just saw that one. Oh, it's supposed to be exponent, not power, and I was not thinking. That is me not feeling well and me not just being smart in my thinkings. Okay, so let's return back to our... Um, Neuron master. And here, what we're going to do instead of, and this make sure we're in the right one, we're in the derivative. What we're going to do is we are going to do dare step, then dare linear. And just really quickly, let's get rid of that because it's only returning A. Now, I could literally just do return A here. I really could. Also, this isn't output anymore. It's output before activation. Okay. And we have uh, dare sigmoid. And we have dare hypertan. And we'll use sigmoid as our default here again as well, just because we use sigmoid as the default above. Okay. So there are those calculations done. Now, we are going to be storing these over here. That's why we can not, why we don't have to worry about them being local values. Right, for our calc batch here, what we're going to do is we are going to, ow, sorry. We are gonna do um, a STD vector of doubles. I keep putting the S in when I say doubles now, I gotta stop saying doubles. We'll call this results local. We are then going to take results local and we are going to resize it by the, sorry, resize, not rend it, by the number of inputs. We are then going to go from there and we're going to do a for loop. So for size ti equals zero, i is less than number of inputs. Um, i gets incremented with each iteration through the loop. 
And what we'll do here Give me one second. I actually might want to do something. I'm just checking my notes. Just, just hang on one moment. You know what? I actually have changed my mind about something. We only ever use it here, really. So, um... Funny part was, I used the wrong one down here. That was supposed to be the local one anyway. But it doesn't matter. We're going to switch it to that. And uh, we're going to get rid of that declaration. <clears throat> Okay, so for our calc batch, we're going to use the same output before activation, and um, Sorry, I'm I'm just thinking about this for a moment. Um, sorry, I was opening a note up. That's why I lowered the screen for a moment there. Um, I'm glad I had this moment where I felt something was wrong here. There we go. Um, <clears throat> number of inputs, e bias, inputs in, yep. Not empty, one number of inputs, hi plus plus, is that the same up here? Yep. Okay. I'm going to copy that note down here. Okay. So now that we have that information, we can go ahead and move on to the next step of this, I guess, which is the part I was kind of hemming and hawing over a moment ago, I realize. And... Now, because it's already gone through the calculation, I don't mind reusing another variable, which is what we're already doing with the activation before output. We're literally... All right, we're going to go through on, on this, and what we're going to do
All right, like I said, I'm not against reusing variables, so screw it. We're going to get rid of that. <clears throat> and this will become results instead, I think, is what we name No, apparently not. What do we name it? I think we might have named it outputs. Oh. Okay. Okay, I guess I might be thinking of my other code where I did use the term result instead. Where the heck are we storing that? Oh, yeah, here's just output. Okay. Sorry, my other version of this, like the one I ran for Udemy, and which I had up uh, on the live stream earlier. Let me just get that back up here so you can see it. Um, I actually did use a variable called results, which is why I'm thinking that. At least I hoped I used a variable called results. So if we go here, uh, nope, that's the wrong one. Sorry, let me just bring you over here for a second. If we go to this, my prep code, and pop it open really quickly. Yeah, I'm kind of uh, doing a weird little dance, I realize. And we go into our neuron here. Ah, that's raw output. Oh. Oh, outputs. It's a double here. I called it outputs, not results. Still, I was used to being in a vector, which is why I always had a moment of like, whoa, we can reuse this variable. No, we can't. We didn't make a variable that was a vector. Now I'm just going to double check. All right, we have inputs, which should be a vector. We have outputs, which should be singular for each neuron. There's A. Yeah, no, okay. We have everything we need for that one. So this would then be, um, result local at i is zero. We're not oh, zero. We're just clearing it out. Okay. We're then going to do another for loop. So size t. And uh, we'll call this J is zero. Um, again, it'll be number of inputs. Sorry, I was thinking about that because I have inputs and input vector written there, and I don't know why I've written both, and it was just confusing me. I think it was just two different ways to get the same number. Dot size versus, hey, we have this variable. Um, and then with this, what we're going to do is outputs before activation. Come on. Output before activation is plus equal and this time we're going to we're using the same code as we did before we're taking this bit we're just going to change it up a bit and this will be j instead of i and um, we're going to take the input at i and we're going to multiply it by Sorry, that isn't right. It's the input, because this is the 2D vector version, the batch version, at j times weight at j. Okay. That's why I was really confused for a minute. And then we're going to take all of that. And we're going to come back here. No, so I should delete that.
activation method. Okay, we're gonna take all of this again. And we're gonna come down. How are you not giving me an error? There is a bug here, by the way. Okay, bug is now resolved. Um, just really quick, I'm gonna build. I expect there to be some errors because I didn't, fin okay. There should actually be an error here. I haven't finished the code up here. Oh, it's a constructor, there's no return, that's why. Right, so uh, we were in Neuron Master implementation. Um, okay, so we've done that bit, right? And now what we need to do is we need to uh, stay within the body of this outer loop. And what we're gonna do is, not sneeze, is do results local at i is equal to none of what I just said. We're gonna paste the thing that I mentioned in earlier first. We can probably get rid of that. No, we need that one in there. Um, and we're gonna take this bit. Okay. And we're gonna paste that in there. Do that here, 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 but not on this one. I'm joking on that one too. Okay. So every time we go through this outer loop, we reset this at whatever it is to zero because then we come in and we update whatever is there. And because we're doing this as a loop or uh, doing take what's already there, add it to this new thing we're doing, we need to zero it here. Once we've gone through the inner loop and this value now has a valid number there, we then come into this switch and we pass it into the appropriate derivative function, which then returns it at that particular index. So we have an, a, a vector of these results. And of course, we are gonna return our results local. And next, or last on this set, we have this function which somehow didn't get declared when I declared one of them, but it declared the one below it. And for this one, what we're going to do for our, wait, oh, that's calc batch. We're on derivative batch now. Ooh, okay. So, um, So I've uh, given you the wrong information. Take all of this, don't delete it, just copy it, paste it into here. What we did originally is a derivative batch. What I wanna do here is the is actually move this elsewhere first off. Let's not take all of that. We wanna take, okay, first, let's minimize derivative just so I don't grab the wrong thing, this calc batch. This is actually the function I was just showing you in the other code. Um, we're gonna put it right here. And then we're gonna go back to the header and uh, take this bit. And what we're gonna do is call this, we're gonna actually rename it as set output batch, just so I don't make that mistake again. 
and boom, there we go. So this one is actually setting the results. Um, and because we're doing it that way, we actually are going to create a vector for the results. And we're going to call them outputs. So vector for batch outputs. And we'll do std vector double outputs. Okay. And let's come back here. We're going to get rid of that. And we're just going to replace that anywhere where we've called it up. Okay. There we go. Oh, and there. Okay. Good. Now let's go down to... So I'm just going to start minimizing things we're not using. I just like doing it this way so it's easier for me to scroll through the code to find the right function, select it, and read it. I know how thrilling it is to watch me do that. All right. So this is derivative batch. And likewise, we will reuse results here. Or outputs, sorry. Also, we need to go back to the batch one crap. I've got to make one change to that that we need to make. One very important change. Okay, so for this one, what we need to do on the calc or set output batch, we need to do this as um, act step, act linear, act sigmoid, and in this case, uh, we need to pass in, there you go, uh, act hypertan, and then again, our default is act sigmoid. Okay. There we go. Right, so now let's return back to our delta rule uh, file. And we left off in our uh, switch within our calc new weight under our online learning method instead of our batch learning method. Um, I think the easiest way to explain this is, funny enough, I'm actually recording this currently in, um, in my Udemy stuff. Let me get my Udemy actually stuff up because there is a video from very early on where I talk about this. And I think think I talk about it in 29. So let's go to 29. Yeah, I do talk about it there. So the way we can think about this is it's synchronous versus asynchronous updating. So asynchronous up or synchronous updating um, is when Uh, the example on the last slide isn't good without me going through the entire example and talking about hammering distances and a whole bunch of other things that we're not getting into on a live stream. Um, so synchronous is all weights are updated at one time. They're done in a batch. Asynchronous is they're done as the information is passed through it. Now, there are benefits to either approach depending on what you're doing. Um, and now in the case on the example on the slides I had, we wanted asynchronous updates because synchronous updates led to data not being correctly uh, recognized and uh, classified um, uh, in that hot field network. So that, that's the difference between the two that I couldn't explain earlier. Right. So this delta weight, uh, I just... I'm going through this again just to make sure we've done this right. So we're checking if the layers are greater than zero. We're gonna throw an error um, else. We're gonna come in, we're gonna take the delta weight and set that, or create delta weight, so change in weight, which will be set to our base learning rate. We are then going to take a uh, an output neuron. And then we're gonna store that as a local neuron. Okay, 
We're then gonna switch based on our learning mode and we start in online. And in online, we take the delta weight, multiply it by, its, uh, by uh, take that, take delta weight, multiply it by error at whatever current record and neuron it is, because it's a 2D vector. Uh, sorry, I'm on the wrong thing to show you. That's a 2D vector. It's a 2D vector. So once we've done that, we are going to take delta weight again. And this is the function we just wrote for. And we are going to take it and multiply it by, and then we're gonna take our neuron local. And we're gonna multiply it by the derivative. And then we're gonna to go to the neural net. Nope, neural net. Still not right, okay. And we're gonna pass in the inputs. So if we go over to our neural net, and we look over here, oh, that's the center for it. I mean, there's the center for the thing. We have this, this input values. And if we go down to get inputs, that's what we're getting there. We're just taking that and passing it through there. Okay, boom. That is that new function that we had to write. So then what we do, is if the input in is less than the number of net, uh, neurons in the network, we multiply the delta weight by the neural net and um, uh, the input at that particular point. Right, that takes us through that one. As for, we're not gonna have a default. Um, sorry, I'm not sure how I missed that earlier. As for our batch method, We're gonna have to come back to this later because this is actually part of the training side of it that we haven't touched on yet. Okay, so just give me one second. Yeah. Okay, uh, sorry, I switched windows. I know I paused the recording temporarily. I was just double checking something. I lost place in my notes. Um, so I deleted something earlier and I kind of felt like it was wrong to delete it. We do need this still. Sorry, this, I realized this made sense in my head. What this is, is we need error measurement still. And we're just gonna default this one. No, we don't. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, ignore me. All right, sorry about that. So what we're gonna do is, um, we're gonna return back to that constructor we paused working on earlier and continue working on that constructor. So I just saved everything really quickly. All right. So we're setting it the paradigm to supervise as for now. We're getting our neural network in. We um, uh, have our new weights declared here. Sorry, just give me one more second. I'm just double checking my own notes on the new weight thing. Making sure I didn't want to have two different versions of that. No, we don't, okay. So we have our new weights uh, that we're gonna be passing into this. Let me just move, move that down a bit. So what we do is we get the number of hidden layers. We then increment through or iterate through, not increment, iterate through uh, that number of hidden la layers we have. And in there, we are declaring int of number of uh, neurons in layer as zero and number of inputs into that neuron as zero. And 
And now I just go back here, make sure I'm not going completely bonkers. It's a 2D vector. Yeah, like I thought. Like I was being really confused by it last time. Sorry, what I'm thinking about as I'm sitting here is how many, uh, how I'm going to resize the outer and inner vectors. And the way I'm going to do that, Okay, sorry, I'm being stupid. I'm looking right at it, and I'm misreading it, so I was very confused as to how I was not just going to do something really obvious. So what we're going to do is new weights dot resize, and it's going to be number of hidden layers. And then... Here, what we're going to do is new weights dot at i dot resize number of oh hang on am I doing this in the wrong spot we're going to do this a couple of lines up just give us a couple of spaces there and I'm going to put some spaces in here too. Um, right, so I want to do... Jesus. Okay. So number of neurons in layer if less than one equals neural net get number of hidden neurons okay the number of hidden neurons is going to be passed into here so we're going to do that here resize uh, number of neurons in layer even though that was already spelled right it highlighted it um, okay, so that's the number of neurons in the layer. Okay, and then in this loop, when we're going through the neurons in the layer, we're going to take this number of input neurons. Oh, I already have the code written in there. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, did I declare this variable yet? And there it is. This is the COVID brain acting up on you again. So, <coughs> speaking of which, <coughs> oh yeah, I realize you can tell I paused now because I'm actually on camera for this one, so you can see when I jump around that I've paused. I didn't pause that time. I was going to pause as I coughed. I was thinking about that. Oh yeah, you can see me coughing, therefore you can see, yeah. All right. So, now that we have that value, or not that we have that value, now that I have clarified in my own head that that thing was declared already, um... What we're going to do Hang 
hand. So I should have gotten this right. Get hidden inputs. That doesn't seem right, actually. Uh, neural net. Get hidden inputs. Oh, no, that is right. It's the no get number of inputs. Okay. I might not get... Because it's already a long one, I'm just going to rename this as num, so I don't get confused like that again, or do something weird like that. There we go. Uh, yeah, you're going to give an error because I hit compile instead of uh, paste when I was changing that name. And yes, again, I know I can use the rename refactoring tool. I'm just, because I know where I've used it, felt like this would be faster. Right. Um, then what we're going to do. Uh, is we're going to go through and we're going to set each of these to zero. And what I'm going to do to do that is do another nested loop for now. I'm probably going to change this down the road. Uh, K is less than or equal to number of of Input neurons is it equal to the number of input neurons. Sorry, I just had to think about that. We increment K and then we go back and we fix the typo there. There we go. And then we do new weights, not the new keyword, at I dot at J is equal to zero. We're just making sure there's no junk data in there. Okay. So one, two, three, yep. Uh, and so else, and now I pause the thing so I can sneeze. All right, yeah, sorry about that. You can see me jump because I paused to sneeze. All right, so else, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do numbers of neurons in layer. And I the neurons in layer get number. So, ow, my head is now throbbing from that sneeze. This is, if so this one is going to be our output layer we're doing it for really um and What I want to do is just go over to our neural net really quickly. And we have Outputs. Number of hidden neurons. Yep, 
you know, we'll have to iterate that later. I forgot I had that variable. I'm just gonna make a note for this later on. If you wanna update the code based on what you've seen me do, you could do this. Oh wait, hang on. Uh, you could. there and then add the question mark here even though there's already one at the end because uh, I'm not sure if I actually want to do that update so what I'm looking for funny part is um, sorry I'm laughing because I realized I used a variable right next to that one right here um, so we want to get the number of outputs Just gonna very quickly check in here. Yeah, no, I have not done anything with that. Um, okay, I'm just gonna put it up here. Get number of outputs. So I'm pretty sure that's private, it is. All right, so that's inline uint 32t, get number of output neurons const return and then number of outputs there we go okay so we're gonna go back with that function here and in our else statement we are going to do um, equal neural net pointer it is a pointer I hope uh, and then get number of output neurons. Just gonna go back here for a second. The alternative approach to this one is similar to what we did down here, where alternatively we could do this in fact, actually, I'm going to do that as an example really quickly. Uh, I'm actually just going to copy all of this to show you that it should work, minus the fact that we're using some of the same stuff over again without properly overloading. Names, some of the same names again without properly overloading. And then from there, get number of neurons and layer. That will also work. Now, give me one second. I have a feeling that the original one I did won't work, and I'm just going to double check. Oh, no, that would work. It is a number of layers in the neuron, or number of neurons in the layer. Um, so either one of those would work. Okay, I'm going to go and go with my original version of it, just because that's what I wrote originally. Right. Then, now that we have the number of neurons in that layer, what we're going to do is we're going to iterate through another loop. I couldn't think what the word was for a second. I was going to say vector. Then I was going to say array. And we're going to set our, our set up our stuff around that. And so for this, we're going to do for size t. Uh, we'll do just so I'm consistent. I zero. I is less than number of neurons in layer. Increment I. And then within this, I know we're gonna have another loop. Let's be four size T. And that was J in the last one. Sorry, I'm looking at the code above because I wanna mirror that one just a bit. And this will be um, less than or equal to number of input 
in inputs in the neuron and then we will increment j okay so first thing we need we know we need already is we need to store this because currently in this else it has not been set so we need to set this here Sorry, I'm just scrolling down my notes because I reached the bottom of the page and I wasn't scrolling. I'm clicking on it like, please, please respond. Okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. So we have a uh, number of neurons in layer, incrementing it. And then we're going to do set our number of inputs in this neuron. To do this, we're going to do neural net. It's a pointer. So we're going to use the arrow operator. And then we don't have the function for this. We have written a similar function. And for this, it's very similar to this one, except for we're not going across a vector storing a vector. We're going across one vector. So for this, we are going to um, gets the number of inputs into the output neuron into a spec uh, into an output neuron at index i or index 9 <coughs> now that wouldn't work <clears throat> right so what we're doing here so we're going to do an inline uint 32t and that's going to be get uh, output neurons this is possessive by the way just like this one down here you just can't put an apostrophe in num inputs and size t i const return or return apparently return yeah, flipping e issue okay um, oh, and I hate COVID right now. Um, so we're going to do output layer ref get neuron singular because remember there's more than one I and then dot get number of inputs. Okay. Oh, make sure to add in that part. There we go. So let's take this new function we wrote, bring it over here, and we're going to pass in i. That was the other reason why I wanted i first. Because um, technically, the way I do i and j or i and k is where it is in the 2D vector for this sort of stuff, but I'm reversing my normal method of doing it. So that it matches that. Um, yeah, I'm weird like that. And I'm probably going to hate myself for it later, but uh, l that's a problem for later me. Now me, who is not iterating through my own code, <clears throat> well, technically I am because I am using my old my old code and notes around my old code and notes around things I wanted to do for the Udemy course to write this. Um, so we have set the number of neurons in In the layer, um, just want to make sure I haven't forgotten anything. Okay. Oh, shit. Okay, uh, I lied to you. This is an I. Sorry, I forgot we're still inside this loop. This actually is J. So let's change that over to J. That becomes J. And uh, following the convention from earlier, this is K. 
and uh, put a Terminator there. Okay. Sorry about that. this here as well Give me one second. I want to just write some pseudocode out. I just have a blank text file. Thank you. Okay, give me one moment. I'm just going to do it over here. So you're going to hear me typing. We're doing four. And sorry, I'm not doing the, the correct variables I would be doing. Uh, four int l equals zero. L is less than or equal to number of hidden letters. L is plus one. I'm also intentionally using letters I'm not using here. Okay, then we're going to do uh, int num nouns in layer. Num nouns, uh, no, num inputs into neuron. Then we do new weights dot resize num for hidden layers. Cool. And if L, which is I, is less than <coughs> number of hidden layers. We then will do uh, num well, l is less than number of hidden neurons. We then do we then set num of neurons in layer equals neural net pointer get num of neurons in layer. Okay, now that we've done that, we will then go another for loop, and that's int num of neurons in layer, increment. So I'm not sure why I'm not showing you me doing the pseudocoding. There's me doing the pseudocoding. Um, so it's not really, it's more coding than pseudocoding, but it's just so I can retype this without having to stare at my own code going, what, what is going on? Um, okay. Uh, number of inputs into neuron is equal to neural net, uh, get hidden layer at L dot get neuron at j dot get inputs. Okay. New weight dot at l is. Is that right? That doesn't seem right to what I'm planning. No, it's resize. It's not. <clears throat> resize. All right, without looking at my own code now, what am I resizing it to? 
number of neurons in the layer or the number of inputs? That's the part I'm actually questioning myself on. So that is this bit here. I did number of neurons in the layer because I already did the number of hidden neurons. So resize, number of hidden neurons. Have I not also done? So, yep, I reverse those two, but whatever, yep, okay, number of neurons in layer, okay, ah, okay, Resize there, yep. And then a resize down here. Okay, hang on, I'm gonna just continue for a second before I figure it out if I've done that run. One wrong. Four in I equals zero. There's our third loop. I is less than or equal to uh, num of inputs into neuron i plus plus new weights dot at l dot at j dot or is equal to zero point zero okay It should be num of neurons in layer. All right, so let's go through this again. Uh, this is now I instead of L or J, L. I, yep, that's right, number of hidden layers. Set that, resize there. Then if I instead of L is less than the number of hidden neurons, we get the number of hidden neurons in that layer in that particular layer. And we pass that into here. We can do this bit up here. Yeah, that makes a bit more sense to do. Okay, then for size J, oh crap, I didn't want those letters to line up. Mm, whatever, for J. J is number of inputs, neural net. So that is get the number of inputs, that's right. Then K, instead of I, that's right. Okay, oh, technically that should be that. All right, there we go. That's that first part done. Now for the else. I think I'm actually missing a bracket in this, to be fair. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Never mind, I'm not missing a bracket. All right, so else. And then what we're gonna do is, um, number of neurons in layer is equal to and then get output layer 
num and actually I'm just gonna use the same wording I used here just so I don't confuse myself too much there we go all right and then we uh, do new weights or new weight or weights it was weights at L Sorry, I'm intentionally using L because I screwed up the I thing earlier, but I wanted to change them all up. and Or I want to use my normal ones, but do them in a different order. I mean, I only have three, so one of them was probably going to be in the same spot. Uh, so then we take that. New weights at I equals two. Um, nope. Resize. And then it's num of neurons in layer. Okay, Wow. Sorry, that is how covid -y I am right now. I had to do that just to work out if I'm doing this right. So this is the else we're doing. Sorry, I'm just gonna bring this back over here just so you can see me walk through this. Come on, thank you. Uh, oh, PowerPoint's still open. Um, we're gonna do, okay, so else, god damn it. All right, else. Else, number of neurons in the layer, get number of output neurons, and then we want to do new weights at i dot resize, and then we're going to resize it to this. There we go. Is that what we did up here? Yes, it is. Okay, cool. Now we're back on track. Right. By the way, when we finish up this constructor, I am finishing this video. This was literally where I was going to get us to today anyway. Um, but because I just had brain parts around the derivative thing. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, well, that takes us to the pseudocode I've done. I'm just going to leave this up here in case I want to do a little bit more pseudocode later on. Just going to save that. Don't want to save that text file, by the way. Do not want to save it. Right. So, um, for j, j is less than the number of inputs in the layer, j plus plus. Number of inputs in this layer, or number of inputs into the neuron is equal to the same thing as before. Uh, let's find the j up here. Yep, that's right. Also, just gonna add a space in. We then have our four, uh, our next for loop, which is k. And in this one, uh, we do four. We do new weights dot at i. Well, I'm glad I did that. That showed me there's a problem. Oh, I'm so, okay. We'll fix that problem in a minute. And if you don't know what the problem is, there. Look at the screen carefully. Look very carefully. All right. We're going to do that. And then we're going to do, um, just going to scroll up here, at J. And then we're going to set this to zero as well. Right, so I am glad I didn't close that file, by the way, because now I need it for reals. All right. No, I don't. I need this over here for now. Oh. Yeah, I just did the same thing twice. Okay. <laughs> well, it wasn't as big of an issue as I thought it was going to be. Okay, there we go. Let's build real quick. 
Make sure there are no errors that we need to resolve. We have one error. Result local undefined. Um, and this is actually outputs we're returning now. Cool. Okay. Build again. All right, that succeeded. That takes us through what I wanted to do today. I am not saving the text file. Thank you much. Okay. I think yeah I'm pretty sure that takes us through what I wanted to do um, let me just go through the Delta real, real quick and see what we've done we've done that first constructor notice I said first by the way there are two we're doing we have one more to go um, at least one more to go. There's going to be at least three total. The default, the one we just did, and one more. So at least two we have to write. There might be more. Read. Depends on how far into this we get. There will be more. I haven't decided how far into this project we're going to go. Um, right. Then we've done our set general error. Sorry, I'm just clearing off my list of functions on my thing. Have we done set overall error? Uh, we have we finished calc new weight. No, we have not finished calc new weight, so I'm not deleting that from my list. We have to finish. We have to do some other things with this as well. Um, we don't have the other calc new weight, do we? Nope. So yeah, we actually have a lot of functions to still write for this one, but this one is a little bit more complicated than the rest. So take with that what you take from that what you will. Right, and I'm just going to save my note file here for where I left off at. Um, and this is delta we're in. Delta rule left off location. Sorry, I'm just playing out the delta rule stuff from the rest of the stuff I'm doing. But yeah, that takes us through what I had planned for us to do today originally. Um, actually, I planned us to do one more thing, but that was another segment of the game engine stuff but i again within an hour of doing this and i think i've been recording for about 90 minutes now uh, well 80 minutes technically 83 if you want to be precise there were some pausing i realized um so i've been actually doing this a little bit longer closer to 90 minutes but already around minute 40 i started feeling really miserable again I can't talk this long. I can't concentrate this long with COVID, unfortunately. So I'm calling it here. I'm going to upload this. Uh, and again, apologies for how off things have been on the last live stream and this Discord live stream. Hopefully things will be better. I am going to try again on Friday to continue this. Um, I might actually write the um, the input stuff in because that honestly is generic C++ and is boring. And if someone wants me to do a video on that, I will gladly do a side video on that without any context so you can expand it out to what you need. But for this, it is dry. Anyone screaming, but I don't know how to read an image in. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about reading in text. So reading in float values for my text file. When we get to the stage where we have to read an image in, oh, for sure, I am doing that on live stream if we get to that stage. If we don't get to that stage, it'll be on my Udemy course, oddly enough. Um, so there'll be someone, it'll be. I'll be covering it somewhere. All right, that said, I look forward to seeing you either in the next live stream or the next tutorial, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.